Hello and welcome to another video on angles on parallel lines and in this video we're going to be looking at calculating some missing angles using some of the angle facts that we learnt about in the last video. So as a bit of a recap, can you remember the names of these four pairs of angles? So pause the video and see if you can have a go at doing that. Okay, so this first pair of angles, these are known as opposite angles and opposite angles are always equal. Now, these two angles in red, these are also equal and they are known as corresponding angles. And now we've got these two purple angles. Notice they are on alternate sides of this line, which is also known as a transversal. So these are known as alternate angles. And again, they are both equal. And finally, we've got these two green angles and these are not equal to one another, but they sum to 180 degrees. And these are known as co-interior angles. So now we've got all of this out the way, let's have a look at calculating some missing angles. Okay, so I've got four questions for you to have a go at. So pause the video and see if you can calculate the missing angles marked with the letters. Okay, I'm assuming you've paused the video, so let's go through this now. So if we start on question one, let's work out A first, because I can see we can work that out straight away, because I can see that these two angles are opposite angles, and opposite angles are equal. So A is going to be 115 degrees. Now, we can't at the moment work out what B is. You might have been tempted to say, well, B is the same as A. You might have said, let's just highlight this. You might have said, well, A, this angle, and this angle are corresponding angles. But no, that is incorrect. And the reason it's incorrect is because these two lines are not parallel. Okay, they don't have these arrows on. If they did, so if they had these arrows on, well, that would say that they're parallel and these would be corresponding angles, but we can clearly see that they're not parallel. So we cannot say that B and A are corresponding. So let's work out what a different angle is. Let's look at C because we can work out what C is. So I can see that these two angles form a straight line and I know that angles on a straight line sum to 180 degrees. So C must be 75 degrees. Just took 105 away from 180. So let's write these in. So we've got 115, we've got 75. So what else can we work out? Well, now I do have parallel lines. So these two lines are parallel. So what I can do is if I just highlight angle C, well, this angle and this angle are corresponding because they are we do have parallel lines. So this is going to be 75 degrees. And now I can work out what B is. Well, B is going to be 180 minus 75. So B is going to be 105 degrees. So B is 105 degrees. And now finally, we just need to work out what D is. Now to work out D, I think what I'm going to first calculate is this angle here, because I know that these two angles are the same because they're opposite angles. So if I can work out what this angle is, well, that will tell me what D is. So I've got 115 degrees here. This angle I can calculate, well, that's going to be 180 minus 75, or I could just see that these two angles are opposite. So that's going to be 105. This angle, well, that's opposite this angle. So that's going to be 75. And now, because I know the angles in a quadrilateral sum to 360 degrees, I can calculate this angle here. So I can just take all of these angles away from 360. So I'm just going to use my calculator for that. And that gives me 65 degrees. So that is my answer. My answer for D, because I know it's the same as this, is 65 degrees. OK, let's move on to question two. So we've been given two angles here and we've been given a pair of parallel lines. Now, the first thing that immediately pops out to me is that this angle and this angle are alternate angles. So they are equal. So I can say that straight away that B is 72 degrees. And it's exactly the same for A. We've got a pair of parallel lines. So let's do it in a different color. This angle and this angle are also alternate angles. It doesn't matter that this stops here. You know, this, this just could carry on. But these two angles are also the same. So A is also going to be 87 degrees. OK, moving on to question three. Now we've got a pair of parallel lines here. We've also got this angle, so I can calculate angle X straight away because these two angles are opposite. So X, well, that's going to be 92 degrees. I can also see that angle Z, well, that corresponds with angle X. So these two angles are also going to be the same. 
So we can say that Z is also 92 degrees. Now you need to be really careful because this angle here is not alternate to this angle. Okay, they might look like they're alternate angles, but the reason why I know they're not alternate is because these two lines are not parallel. We don't have that arrow, those arrows. Okay, so although they look like they're, they might be parallel, we can't say that they're parallel. You have to have these arrows. Okay, so like these ones here, we know for sure these are parallel. So this one here, oh, well, actually, just me being a bit silly, I can see that they're not equal because I've just calculated this is 92 degrees. So I've got to write that in there. So that's 92 degrees. And now I can see, well, obviously, they're definitely not the same. So here's a knowledge bomb for you. 92 degrees does not equal 100 degrees. So they are definitely not the same. So that was probably just a bit of a waste of time. But hopefully I reinforce the point that in order to have alternate angles, the lines must be parallel. OK, so we just need to calculate y and uh, w so how can we do that well these two lines being parallel means that this angle here and this angle they are co-interior angles so that's one of the ones that sum to 180 degrees so y by definition of the fact that these sum to 180 must be 80 degrees so y is 80 degrees and therefore w Let's do W up here. So it's in alphabetical order. Well, W must be 100 degrees. So W is 100 degrees. Two ways of knowing that. Firstly, these two must sum to 180 degrees. Secondly, I can see that this angle and this angle are corresponding. So they must be the same. So W is 100. OK, moving on to the last question. So we need to cal calculate P and Q. And the only angle we're given is this angle. So I can see that these two angles are corresponding. So that's going to be 75 degrees. And these two angles, so the, what, this one here and this one here, are also corresponding. So that is going to be 75 degrees. And the reason I can say straight away they're corresponding is because these two lines are parallel and these two lines are parallel. And now we can actually calculate this angle. These two are corresponding, so that is 75 degrees. And again, I've just noticed I'm being a bit slow because straight away, these two angles are corresponding. I've gone all the way around. I've gone the long way around when you could have just calculated these two angles are corresponding. So this must be 75 degrees. But uh, any, anyhow, I've got to this angle. Uh, and now I can calculate what Q is because I can just use the fact that angles around a point sum to 360. So if we just take this away from 360, we get, I believe I can do this in my head, 285 degrees. Is that right? Yes, I believe so. Q is 285 degrees. So upon editing the video, I have just noticed that when I was calculating this angle over here, I uh, used the fact that angles in a quadrilateral sum to 360 degrees. But what I could have done and what you might have spotted is that this angle, this 115 degree angle and this angle here are co-interior. So as soon as I knew this angle, which is 115, I could have said that that was 65 straight away. But uh, it just goes to show that there are lots of different ways for calculating the same thing and you should always get the same answer. So how do you get on with these four questions? Hopefully you got most of them, if not all of them correct. And just to finish, I would say that one of the most important things whenever you're dealing with angles on parallel lines is not assuming that the lines are parallel. So you can only use these angle facts if you're specifically told that the lines that you're dealing with are parallel lines um, and you would be given these arrows to show that. So thank you very much for watching and hopefully I'll see you in the next video. Take care.